Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church in the heart of downtown at the intersection of faith and life. We're so glad you made a decision to worship with us in person and also via live streaming on this, the second Sunday of Advent, in which traditionally uh, John the Baptist comes on the scene to prepare the way for the coming of the Messiah. And also, it is the tradition of First Presbyterian Church on the second Sunday in Advent to have our children's Christmas program. And this year, we're going to be celebrating how God is faithful for God's promise uh, through telling the story of salvation through the, the Jesse tree. And so, we're so glad to have our children in worship as well this morning. Let us prepare ourselves to worship the living God with our call to worship. Please stand if you're able for the call to worship. <clears throat> Creation with sighs and groans longs for the day when the wolf shall lie down with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. Let us worship God. Please be seated. You have a part in this song. It's a call response type of thing. We will pose the idea that you should go where we send you and then you will ask us, how shall I send thee? It goes like this. happens a lot of times. <clears throat> Maybe 10. <laughs> 10. 10. Maybe 11. Maybe 11. Because with one before, so there should be 11. <laughs> Children, go where I send thee. Send thee one by one, one for the little bitty baby he was born. Born, 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 born in Bethlehem. Children, go where I send thee. How oh, shall I send thee? Well, I'm going to send thee two by two, two for Pa and Silas. One for the little bitty baby he was born. Born, born, born in Bethlehem. Children, go where I send thee. Send thee three by three, three for the Hebrew children, two for Paul and Silas, one for the little bitty baby. He was born, 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 born in Bethlehem. Children, go where I send thee. How shall I send thee? Well, I'm gonna send thee four by four, four for the four that stood at the door, three for the Hebrew children, two for Paul and Silas, one for the little bitty baby, he was born, 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 born in Bethlehem, said he was born, 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 born in Bethlehem, children go where I send thee, how shall I send thee, well I'm gonna send thee five by five, five for the five that stayed alive, four for the four that stood at the door, three for the Hebrew children, two for Paul and Silas, one for the little bitty baby, born, born, born in Bethlehem, children go where I send thee, how shall I send thee? Well, I'm gonna send these six by six, six, six for the six that never got fixed, five, five for the five that stayed alive, four, four for the four that stood at the door, three, three for the Hebrew children, two, two for Paul and Silas, one, one for the little bitty baby he was born, 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 born in Bethlehem. Send thee seven by seven, seven for the seven that never got to heaven, six for the six that never got fixed, five for the five that stayed alive, four for the four that stood at the door, three for the Hebrew children, two for Paul and Silas, one for the little bitty baby, born, born, born in Bethlehem. Children, go where I send thee. 
send thee. Oh, I'm gonna send thee six by eight. Eight, eight for the eight that stood at the gate. Seven for the seven who never got to heaven. Six for the six that never got fixed. Five for the five that stayed alive. Four for the four that stood at the door. Three for the Hebrew children. Two for Paul and Silas. And one for the little bitty baby. Said he was born, 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 born in Bethlehem. Children, go where I send thee. How shall I send thee? Well, I'm gonna send thee nine by nine. Nine for the nine that dressed so fine. Eight for the eight that stood the gate. Seven for the seven that never got to heaven. Six for the six that never got fixed. Five for the five that stayed alive. Four for the four that stood the door. Three for the Hebrew children. Two for Paul and Silas. One for the little bitty baby. Was born, born, born in Bethlehem. Children go. you asked. Well, I'm gonna send thee ten by ten, ten for the ten commandments, nine for the nine that dress so fine, eight for the eight that stood at the gate, seven for the seven that never got to heaven, six for the six that never got fixed, five for the five that stayed alive, four for the four the door three for the Hebrew children, two for Paul and Silas, one for the little bitty baby. Born, born, born in Bethlehem, said he was born, 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 born in Bethlehem. Today is the second Sunday of Advent. Advent means coming. We remember John the Baptist who called for people of faith to prepare for the coming of Christ. There is much to prepare for in being ready for the coming of Christ. Besides the usual preparations for this time of year, like having our tree up and presents wrapped, John reminds us to prepare for the heart of Christ's coming. Heart preparations involve repentance, starting over again in our relationship with God, being baptized, giving the hungry bread to eat, the homeless a place to sleep, and those who are in need of love a warm embrace. Let us pray. O God of the Advent, we confess that it is easier to make preparations for Christmas than for Christ's second coming. Help us to heed the message of John the Baptist this season of Advent so that we are prepared to celebrate the birth of Christ and the rebirth of hope because of righteousness has a home in our hearts. Amen. In the spirit of John the Baptist, who called the people to repentance, let us use the prayer of confession printed in our bulletin for our public confession, and let us use the time of silence for our personal confession. Let us pray. God of the future, 
You are coming in power to bring all nations under your rule. We confess that we have not expected your kingdom, for we live casual lives, ignoring your promised judgment. We accept lies as truth, exploit neighbors, abuse the earth, and refuse your justice and peace. In your mercy, forgive us. Grant us wisdom to welcome your way and to seek things that will endure when Christ comes to judge the world. Amen. Salvation is closer now than when we first believed. Heed the voice of John the Baptist crying in the wilderness. Repent and bear the fruit of repentance and know the joy of being forgiven. Since God has forgiven us in Jesus Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please pass that peace to one and all this morning. Please be seated. As this is the second Sunday of Advent, which really focuses on the message of John the Baptist, our first reading is from the Hebrew Scriptures, the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. It is a prophecy regarding the priestly Messiah. You heard that right. I said, the priestly Messiah. One of the discoveries of the Qumran... Qumran uh, caves, uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls, is that the Essene community did not expect one Messiah, but they expected how many? Two. They expected a priestly Messiah, one who would get the house of Israel in order. John came baptizing for the remissions of sins, and all of Israel went out into the wilderness to be baptized by John. 
And so that Israel might be able to perform its historic functions to be a priest to the nations. The second Messiah would be that of the king like David. It would be a kingly Messiah, one who would establish God's rule here on earth. And one of the first things that, uh, that the kingly Messiah would be would be to get rid of the Romans. And so this would explain why the people were so excited because they believed John to be the priestly Messiah. So that meant that when John's ministry was over, that God would be sending the kingly Messiah. So hear about the one who's been tasked to prepare the way for God's kingly Messiah. See, I'm sending my messenger to prepare the way before me. The Lord whom you will seek will suddenly come into his temple, the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in days of old, as in former years. Our second reading is taken from the Gospel of Luke. You've heard the song of Elizabeth and you've heard the song of Mary. This is the song of Zechariah, who is the father of John the Baptist. He is a priest. Zechariah was ministering in the temple when the angel came to him and announced what was going to happen to him and Elizabeth. They were beyond childbearing age, yet they were to be graced with the baby. Zechariah didn't believe the angel, and suddenly Zechariah is not able to speak. And when he comes out, they see that he has seen something but he can only write it down. And when at last John the Baptist is born, when it comes time to naming the baby, and it was custom for the firstborn to be named after the father, and so they expected him to be called Zechariah. But suddenly, Zechariah is given speech, and he says, his name shall be John. Upon saying that, he breaks forth in song of exaltation for God has been faithful to God's promise in sending a deliverer and sending one who will prepare the way for the deliverer. Listen to Zechariah's song of deliverance. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he's looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He's raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham, to grant, that, to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear and holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our fate into the way of peace. This ends the reading of God's holy word. May God bless it for our purposes. The word of the Lord. We now have come to that part of our worship service with the presentation of the Jesse tree. Good morning. Just a few notes, if you know children. 
It's a moving target, so we have a few changes. Um, Tori Rakowski is going to be reading, and Cassidy Steiner in the place of two of our kids. So thank you, girls. Every family has a tree, and the family of Jesus is no exception. Jesus was one of Jesus, I'm sorry, Jesse was one of Jesus' ancestors who lived in Bethlehem about 3,000 years ago. In Isaiah chapter 11, the prophet tells us that there shall come forth a shoot from the stumps of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. For hundreds of years, artists have been inspired by this verse to make illustrations of the family tree of Jesse. Our Jesse tree is a representation of both the physical and spiritual heritage of Jesus. It is a visual reminder of those who came before Jesus who helped to prepare the way for the Lord. In the beginning, God created Adam and Eve and placed them in the garden, but they disobeyed God and ate the fruit of the tree of knowledge. The apple reminds us that we do not always do the right thing. Noah tried to be a good person, even when no one else did. Because of Noah's faithfulness, God made a covenant, or a promise, that God would never again destroy the whole world. The rainbow is our symbol of that covenant. The Lord said to Abraham and Sarah, take your tent and leave your country, your relatives and your family house, and go to a land which I will show you. I will give you many descendants and will make you a great nation. We remember God's promise to Abraham and Sarah with a tent. Abraham and Sarah had a son named Isaac. His symbol is bundles of wood such as those used in Old Testament times for burnt sacrifices. These remind us that Isaac was willing to sacrifice his own life if that was what God wanted.
Isaac and his wife Rebecca had a son named Jacob, who became the father of the nation of Israel. Traditionally, his symbol shows the sun for Jacob and 12 stars for his sons, whose families became the 12 tribes of Israel. Jacob's favorite son, Joseph, was sold into slavery in Egypt by his brothers, but he rose into a position of power. He managed the Pharaoh's grain supplies so well that he was able to save the Egyptian people and even his own family from a terrible famine. Our symbol for Joseph is his coat of many colors. Many years after Joseph's family had come to live in Egypt, the Hebrew people had become slaves. God sent Moses to lead them out of Egypt and become a new nation. Through Moses, God gave the people the Ten Commandments as rules for the new nation. The tablets of the Ten Commandments remind us of Moses. In the early years, the new nation of Israel was not ruled by kings, but by leaders known as judges. One of these was a strong and wise woman named Deborah who helped lead the army of Israel to victory because when the, me when the men were afraid to go. Because of this, we use a shield as a symbol of Deborah. Ruth was a young widow from the country of Moab who returned to Israel with her mother-in-law. There she married an important citizen of the Bethlehem named Boaz. Because Ruth was gathering grain in Boaz's fields when they first met, she is usually represented by the symbol of wheat. Ruth and Boaz had a son named Obo with about womb little is known except that he had a son named Jesse. 
This is the Jesse who whom our Jesse tree is named. Jesse's son David was a shepherd boy who lived about 1,000 years before Jesse. Despite his humble birth, David became Israel's greatest king because he was also a gifted musician. He is often remembered with the symbol of a harp. David's son Solomon is represented on our tree by a crown because he was the third king of Israel. Solomon was famous for his wisdom, and he did many wonderful things, including rebuilding the temple of Jerusalem. After the time of Solomon, many of the people of Israel forgot about God and the rules God had given them to live by. During this time, God sent the prophets to remind the people how they should live. We should play, we place scrolls on our tree to remind us of the writings of the prophets. Many years later, just before Jesus was born, Mary's cousin Elizabeth had a baby named John. When John was grown, he began to preach, and people said that he was the one whom the prophet Isaiah had said, Behold the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Our symbol for John the Baptist is the rough camel skin coat he wore. The Bible tells us that Mary's husband, Joseph, was a descendant of David. That was why Joseph and Mary had to go to Bethlehem, the city of David, to be counted in the census when Jesus was born. Because Joseph was a carpenter, our symbol for him is a saw. The last symbol we add to our Jesse tree is for Mary, the mother of Jesus. The Bible tells us that after the birth of Jesus, Mary brought back, thought back on everything that had happened and pondered these things deep in her heart. Therefore, our symbol for Mary is the heart.
I think the children did a wonderful job, did they not? It's been a while since I've seen the presentation of the Jesse Tree, and I forgot what an aerobic workout it was. I was thinking, I'm not so sure I could do this Stairmaster. So I appreciate the younger ones that helping out in that. And now, the star on the top of our tree is there to remind us that this is a family tree of Jesus who came to be the light of the world, as the prophet Isaiah tells. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. For unto us a child is born. To us a child is given. And now our Jesse tree is complete. From Adam through Mary, we have traced the spiritual and physical history of Jesse's family. When we look at this tree, we are reminded that since the beginning of time, there have been people who have worked faithfully to prepare the way of the Lord and make his path straight. And we're challenged to do the same today. Our response of the word that has been done through presentation is with the Apostles' Creed. And the line that uh, I want us to focus on is, Conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, let us stand and confess the faith of our baptism. And all of God's people said, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray. O God, in whom we live and move and have our being, we give you thanks for the precious gift of life, for the life that you've given us in Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son. May we be good stewards of this life that has been given to us, especially on the second Sunday of Advent, when we remember the ministry and message of John the Baptist, a voice crying in the wilderness, calling all to repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. And then John called on the people to bear fruits of repentance, doing practical things like those who lack shelter should be given shelter. Those who lack clothes should be given clothes. Those who lack food should be given food. Out of our abundance, we are to give to those in need, especially this time of season when so much focus is on possessions. Help us to cut through the commercialism of Christmas, to once again prepare our heart 
so that righteousness has a home when you come again. And as we celebrate your first coming, we lift up to you the concerns of the world. We pray for those in positions of authority at the national, at the state, and at the local level. May they render decisions for the common good. We pray for your church, that we might be salt and light, salt that preserves the good in the world, light that shines a light on the good in the world, so that others might see the good works in us and give glory to you, O Lord. We also pray for this church. As we're faced with the adapted challenge of being a small congregation in a big building, give us a vision for the future. Let us pause during the season of Advent to wait on you. Let us pause the season of Advent to be still that we might know you, our God. Let us pause the season of Advent for once again, for do you speak your life-giving word? We pray for those in our congregation. We lift up to you, Dr. Christopher Fox and Shao Kong, you and family, Liz Lang, Donovan McCall, Terry Hawkins, and, Easter, and Esther Harrington. May they continue to grow in your love and in your grace. We pray for those in hospital, for those in rehab, for those recovering at home, and those who are making a transition from this life to the next life. O oh Lord, you are our Emmanuel. Be with us. May those who stand in the need of healing, may they call upon you, and may you answer them in their hour of need. May they also know your abiding love and presence through the presence of family, the presence of family of faith. This we pray in the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue to worship God with our tithes and our offerings, remembering the words of Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive.
God of grace and God of glory, by your grace we are saved. And may these gifts redound to your glory as we continue to bear witness to your present and coming kingdom. In your holy name we pray. Amen. charge to you this morning is to behold the Jesse tree. Through all the symbols you see on this tree, it is a story of salvation. In fact, I'm going to teach you a German word today. Uh, I learned this word first in Old Testament class taking notes. It's Heilgeschichte. It means salvation history. How say good sister history and so we were taking notes and one of my classmates asked the professor and how do you spell it and he says like it sounds <laughs> and now go out in the world in peace have courage hold on to what is good return no evil for evil strengthen the faint-hearted support the weak and help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now unto him who is able to do more than we can think or possibly even imagine, be all glory in the church, in the world beyond the church, in the life everlasting, in the name of the Father, in the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 